Well, good morning. <laughs> I'm not really doing a video right now. I'm just seeing how the camera angle is working because when I really do a video, I'm not going to use this old man's voice. I think you should. Plus, I'm going to comb my hair. I'm feeling like an old man <clears throat> today. I'm going to comb my hair a little better. <laughs> <laughs> that was... Yeah, you're older. <laughs> yeah, I had a birthday. I'm a year old. That was funnier than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I am still what? My own best audience. Yes. Of course. Here's Becky. Now it's time to go comb my hair. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Okay, so I cleaned up for you a little bit. And some of you are going to say I'm not keeping it real because you, you know that I'm a short sandals and t-shirt guy. But I'm in Oregon and it's raining and it's cold and it's wet. And enough said. Why did I move to Mexico, people say. Well, uh, I, let me tell you. It was not entirely about any single thing, of course, but it wasn't about the fact that you can live more economically in terms of living costs. It wasn't about the wonderful people of Mexico um, and a culture based upon family values and a lifestyle based upon enjoying life and having uh, fun times instead of chasing the almighty dollar or being locked into having to chase the almighty dollar because your lifestyle uh, won't let you get out of that uh, treadmill. Nope, the real reason, and it's very simple, that I moved to Mexico was that I went down there for a vacation and I found out something absolutely amazing. After living in Portland, Oregon for 27 years, I discovered sunshine. <laughs> Let me take you outside and show you what I'm talking about. It was because the streets look like this with puddles. The car looks like this, wet. And the sky looks like this, about eight months out of the year. That's the real reason I moved to Mexico. So in one of my other videos, uh, I think I said something like, uh, in my life I have always tried to uh, make changes when something was drawing me to it rather than something that was pushing me away. And so now I've said that the Oregon weather pushed me away. Nope, it was the sunshine in Mexico that drew me. In my last video I talked about uh, wanting to say something with regard to that time in an RVer's life when it's time to hang up the keys, to have an exit strategy, an exit plan for when you get too old to drive. There are three concepts that mesh in my mind. One is RVing, another one is minimalism, and the other one, of course, is the economy of having a place to live in Mexico. Uh, many people are finding that minimalism is a better way to live. And it's not all retirees who are moving into RVs or finding that they need to downsize, whether it's to an RV or to an apartment from a big house or whatever. There comes that time when you want to downsize. And it's not always just retirees. Even a lot of millennials are knowing that having a big mortgage and a big car payment may uh, not be the best course in life. So, when you move into an RV, and whether that's a van, or a Class B, or a Class A like this one, 
Um, it's all kind of the same concept of minimalism, of downsizing, of getting rid of the big house and, and most of the stuff and um, living a more simple life. And to me, that idea of downsizing, minimalizing, moving into a more nomadic lifestyle, and then eventually having a place where it's more economical to live are the three things that all kind of meshed in my mind a few years ago. I have to see what's going on out here. Hang on a second. Oh, it's a big Montana. Well, I guess he'll figure that out. Camouflaged pickup that he's driving. He must be a prepper. He looks like a prepper. I'm not a prepper. I don't believe that the world's going to fall apart. But I sometimes joke, not entirely a joke, that when it does, I'm glad that I already have a home in Mexico, a country that already knows how to be poor. Well, in my last video, I said I wanted to talk about exit plans, exit strategies, the RVing life when it comes to an end and it's time to hang up the keys. Our plan, of course, if you've been watching my videos, is that we will live in our home in Mexico. You have to think about, well, what do you need when it's time to hang up the keys? What are you going to need? You're going to need a place to live. You're going to need some income. You're going to need some health care and probably more health care than you have needed before. And you're going to need some assistance. Um, people to help you because uh, you can't take care of yourself as well as you could. I know that if you're uh, young and you're living a minimalist lifestyle in your van, or your schoolie, or you're like the lady that I met in Ehrenberg last year who had a Lexus and a porta potty, um, or even if you're a millennial and you have figured out <laughs> that having a big mortgage and a big car payment may not be the best course in your life, to follow. Uh, if any of those things apply to you, uh, you have figured out that there is a different way to live and uh, you don't like to talk about when that wonderful sense of free living comes to an end. But it will come to an end. And um, much as we don't like to talk about it, those of us who are of a certain age or a certain health condition will find that the time does come when it's time to, as we say, hang up the keys because we're no longer safe to drive. Uh, our plan after living in our old south wind for three years in 2001, 2, and 3, was to uh, start developing a place that we could call home in a less economical or in a less expensive place to live. And we considered a number of places in the United States. Um, down in uh, Tennessee and Kentucky, we found places that were very economical to live. Uh, as you well know, that's not the place we picked. We, pl we picked Mexico. And uh, I would like to suggest, I don't want to say encourage, I would just like to suggest that whether you are young and living the minimalist lifestyle because it makes financial sense to you, or whether you're of retirement age and you're living in your Lexus or your Class A or anything in between, and realize that there is a time in your life, whether it's 20 years, 10 years, or 3 years from now, you will need to do something different in terms of a lifestyle, I would like to suggest that you consider Mexico. 
A lot of my videos have been about getting rid of the idea promoted for political gain sometimes and promoted to sell advertising on TV because that's what TV is. It's an advertising business and people don't uh, watch good news, they watch bad news. So the U.S. media has a vested interest in telling all the bad things that happen, not only in the United States, but in all the other countries in the world, including Mexico. I would suggest that if you listened to the news yesterday and you saw that 20 people died in a limousine, that you are not going to decide that you're never going to live in a li uh, 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 travel in a limousine again because 20 people died. Well, if you see that 20 people died in Mexico, use the same reasoning. Mexico is a big place. There are lots of wonderful places in Mexico. Wonderful places to live, wonderful places to retire. And if you're one of those people who say, well, if it's so wonderful in Mexico, why are truckloads of people trying to cross the border illegally? Well, your count is off. 135 million Mexicans are not coming north and don't want to because they have a wonderful life in Mexico. Now, of course, there are places in Mexico you don't want to live. You don't want to live in the barrio in Laredo. And I'm not picking on Laredo. I don't know anything about the barrio in Laredo. In Laredo, I'm doing the same thing that I've told you not to do. I'm making assumption from having seen the news. There are places in the United States where you don't want to live. I don't want to live in parts of Chicago. I don't want to live in parts of L.A. There are many places in the United States I do not want to live, and there are many places in the Mexico that you do not want to live and should not live. But there are other places in Mexico, which is a huge country, a very diverse country geographically. It's not all desert and cactus. I was talking to a guy from Idaho the other day, and he says, Oh, we've got big mountains in Idaho. And I kind of got the sense that he was saying that we didn't have any big mountains in Mexico. Well, I looked it up. We have five mountains taller than any mountain in Idaho. We have six mountains, I think it was, over 15,000 feet. We have an 18,000-foot mountain in Mexico. And in my home in Ajijic, if you hike up into the hills behind Ajijic, you can see the volcano of fire, Mount Kalima, and has snow on it all year round. So I live in central Mexico, south of Guadalajara, and I can see snow all year round if I hike up for about 15 minutes above my house up the hill. Anyway, what I was saying is that Mexico is a great diverse place, and there are many parts that are wonderful to live in. We happen to be lucky enough to live in one of those places. So, my video is about, hey, Mexico is not such a terrible, dangerous place. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the nice parts. Um, why did I move to Mexico? Well, in spite of my little thing about the weather, it wasn't about the weather. Uh, the weather in the part of Mexico that I live is wonderful. And it was certainly part of it. But as a retiree, and talking about that time when it's time to hang up the keys from your RV life, you're going to need a place that's economical. Now, there are those people who live in their million-dollar prevos uh, who probably uh, don't think this applies to them. But uh, let me tell you, there are places for rich people to live in Mexico, too. There are a lot of rich people in Mexico. Mexico has a lot of poor people. Mexico has a lot of rich people. The middle class is growing, but don't think that Mexico is a poor country. There are a lot of very wealthy people in Mexico, and they live a very wealthy lifestyle. Um, so there's room for all um, levels of financial ability. But I think that when I'm talking to retired RVers or I'm talking to uh, younger people who are living a minimalist lifestyle, we're not talking about living in your million-dollar prevo. We're talking about um, those of us who have to uh, pay attention to where our money is coming from and where our money is going. 
So when it's time for you to hang up the keys, I would like to suggest that you consider Mexico. Here's our plan. We have a home that we bought in 2004, and then after some years I bought the property next door, and we've developed it into a property that is worth some money. We could sell that property. It's a very hot real estate market right now. We could sell that property and bank the cash, and it's all paid for, by the way. You don't, um, you don't finance things in Mexico with a mortgage like you do in the United States. You might live in a big house and you got a big mortgage. Well, in Mexico, you're going to pay cash. There are short-term loans available, and of course the times are changing, and it's not a third world country with regard to banking anymore either, but uh, most real estate transactions in Mexico are for cash. There could be short-term, high-rate balloons, but that's still cash in my mind. Oh, excuse me. Hello? Hi. Uh, I, you call, I say hi, you talk. That's how this works. We are putting it on the speaker. Oh, okay. Let me nope. shut my let me shut my camera off. <laughs> okay. Oh, great. So that was on camera. Where was I? I think I said that uh, we could sell our uh, property in Mexico and bank the cash and live very comfortably um, off of that for the rest of our lives in assisted living or nursing home or whatever was required uh, in the United States. That's not the plan. The plan is that we will continue to live in our Mexican home and hire in-house help. One of the questions I get is why do two people need 3,700 square feet uh, to live in, in a house? And um, uh, it, it, that's one of the reasons. It's our plan to have in-house help, live-in-house help, when we are too old to take care of ourselves. So, uh, assistance in Mexico is affordable, and that's our plan. We um, think we got it covered. We've got uh, health care that we can afford. We've got a place where um, we can afford the utilities. The property taxes on our house are $300 a year. And if you're in the financial situation, as some retired RVers are, that you really need to watch the pennies, um, I'm glad that I live in a country that already knows how to be poor. Well, to summarize this, uh, I can't tell you everything you need to know about considering retiring in Mexico uh, in one video. So, consider this an invitation to uh, learn some more and to ask me questions I do read my comments and I do answer questions and after living in Mexico for 18 years I know something about it. I don't know everything about it but I know some. So ask me questions, tell me what you need to know in order to either make you comfortable about the idea of considering living in Mexico or uh, just the technical information you need about moving and living in a foreign country. There is some uh, things that you need to know about that. So, if any of this interests you, please subscribe and ask me some questions. I'll answer them to the best of my ability. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.